Hello and welcome to the first segment of a journey through Assyrian history. Quote, as for the one who prevents scholars from seeing and reading the content of my inscriptions, restricts anyone access to my inscriptions in order that it might not be seen and read, may Ashur curse his destiny, end of quote. Those are the words of Ashur Nasser Pal II, King of Assyria, 883 to 859 BC. The Assyrians wanted their story to be told based on how they viewed themselves and how they viewed the world. But that story has not been told properly. If Ashur Nasser Pal II was around today, what would he want? There are five points to keep in mind as we navigate through ancient and modern Assyrian history. First, Assyrian history is continuous. From the ancient period, from the time of the formation of what we come to know as the state of Assyria and later the empire of Assyria, to the time the Assyrians become Christians with the coming of Jesus Christ, to the present time, there is a real relationship, a cultural, geographic, linguistic, historical, demographic relationship between the people of ancient Assyria and the modern Assyrians themselves. This must be acknowledged, and it will be proven as we proceed through these segments. Number two, Assyrian history should be viewed as a whole, but it has been segmented by historians so as to show a disruption between the ancient and the modern Assyrians through the use of labels or words such as Syriac or Nestorian or Aramaic and so on. Why is this? Well, Assyriologists study Assyrians in the ancient period up to the fall of the empire. Syriac specialists focus on Assyrian or Syriac Christianity, what they term Syriac Christianity, and the two often don't meet. Thus, historians, either because of negligence or intention, often feel that the two, the ancient Assyrians and the Assyrians who converted to Christianity, are two separate entities. And certainly the ancient Assyrians and the modern Assyrians do not come together. So Assyrian history must be viewed as a whole. Also, historians who deal with modern Assyrians, when referring to modern Assyrians remembering or referring to their ancient history, oftentimes refer to it as bogus ethnicity. This is improper and takes away from the view of Assyrian history as a whole. Third, Assyrian history has been defamed. Assyrians have been viewed as the most ruthless and barbaric and bloodthirsty people in history. In comparing Assyrians with others, they have been viewed as the very personification of evil. This, of course, is not true. And as we go through the segments, you will see that the Assyrians conducted diplomacy and placed as much importance on diplomacy and political um, endeavors and uh, peaceful um, endeavors as much as they did on warfare. In other words, warfare was one part of Assyrian history and should not blind us to other aspects of Assyrian history. Number four, Assyrian achievements have been diluted or lost. What was achieved by the old Assyrian state, for example, 2600 BC, the old Assyrian state in commerce and law has been lost to many people or has been uh, diluted. In terms of business practices and laws and administrative practices, the Assyrians were extremely advanced. Going back to 2600 BC, this ancient 
or old period in Assyrian history, 2600 BC, eventually led to the creation of what was known as the Middle Assyrian period and later the Neo-Assyrian period, where Assyrians reigned supreme throughout the ancient Near East and North Africa. This was no small task because the greatest human enterprise at the time was the Assyrian Empire under Sargon II, Sennacherib, Sarhaddun, and Ashur Manipal. The Assyrian kings list showing 120 kings following one another shows that the Assyrian Empire and the Assyrian enterprise was a stable one. From Tudia and Adamu, names most people are not familiar with, going back to close to 3000 BC, all the way up to Ashur Ubalat II to 609 BC, the Assyrians maintained a stable empire that was one of the in most incredible creations of the ancient Near East, gathering more people under its realm than any other empire up to that time. Assyrian archives were some of the most thorough, the most exhaustive known to mankind. Assyrians kept hundreds of libraries in different cities, in cities such as Ashur, Nineveh, Erbil, Kirkuk, ancient Kirkuk of course was Arafa, and other cities. These cities maintained libraries and archives. In fact, historians today looking at the histories of other peoples often refer to the Assyrian archives because they were so exhaustive and documented everything that was occurring in the ancient Near East and North Africa. Assyrians were great mathematicians and scientists. Their achievements document the fact that they were astronomers who documented what was happening in the heavens above them. The Assyrians built the famed Hanging Gardens of Nineveh, previously known as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. King Sennacherib, in fact, was behind the building of the Hanging Gardens of Nineveh. This was an incredible achievement in engineering and gave other civilizations such as the Greeks the knowledge of engineering and mathematics which up to that time was not present. Even after the fall of the Assyrian state, the Assyrians continued to contribute to mankind's enlightenment in medicine and learning forming the world's first university, the school of Nasibis or Nasibin, the ancient Assyrian Nasibina, teaching theology, philosophy, and medicine. When the Arabs took over Mesopotamia, they learned from Yuhanna bar Maswiya, they learned from Hunayn bar Ishaq, they learned from the renowned Assyrian physician, philosopher, and translator, from his son, Ibn Ishaq, and from Yahya ibn Sarfan, and so on, and so many others who taught scientific knowledge, philosophic knowledge, and conducted translation activities from Greek into Syriac and into Arabic. Had it not been for these great translators who also happened to be scientists, knowledge of ancient Greek science would have been lost to us, and knowledge of ancient philosophy as well. In fact, some of the works of Aristotle and Plato were preserved in Syriac, which was the language of the Assyrians, and in no other language. They were lost to us in Greek, yet maintained in Syriac, and then later in Arabic. Five, the sufferings of the Assyrian people have been ignored. Not only the sufferings, but the persistence of the Assyrian people as well. And through these segments, we hope to clear up the fact that the Assyrians not only suffered a great deal, but also maintained their existence. It is a fact that the Assyrians suffered some of the worst catastrophes known to mankind. So many sources, both Assyrian and non-Assyrian, have documented this. For one, Reverend Joseph Naim's book, Shall This Nation Die?, speaks volumes about the suffering of the Assyrians during the First World War period, what was known to us today as the genocide. The Assyrians, like other Christians, suffered this genocide perpetrated 
upon them by the fading Ottoman Empire and their neighbors, the Kurds. It is said that the Assyrians lost two-thirds of their numbers during this genocide. And by the time the violence ended, through massacres, targeted killings and abductions, and through starvation and disease, the Assyrian people were a shell of their former selves. Yet the Assyrian people did not perish. Over a hundred years later, institutions were reorganized and monuments were built. A new art form, drawing both on the ancient Assyrian past as well as the modern, and the modern sufferings of the people, through a new generation, came to be known. It was spread all over the world, and this new generation, dispersed in many different countries, linked itself both with its ancient past and with its homeland and other communities. As the artifacts of their ancestors were featured in museums in Chicago, London, Berlin, Paris, Moscow, Baghdad, and so many other cities, their pride in maintaining and strengthening their identity became stronger and more pronounced. The Assyrians of today want scholars to read their story, their entire story, a story that has not been properly told, but only told in segments so that we see a disruptive and segmented history. That is to be changed. We seek to tell the story as a comprehensive one, one that is connected in time and space. It is a story based on oral, documentary, and archeological sources, from the Assyrians themselves going all the way back to Ashur Nasirpal II, who cursed the destiny of those who seek to muffle his voice and to blind us to the content of his inscriptions. Thank you and see you next time.